welcome to Wanted Down Under Revisited. Today, we're catching up with the Whelan family, who we first met back in 2006, when we gave them the chance to sample the lifestyle in Perth, Western Australia. When we first met the Whelan family from Luton, Matt's life was dominated by work and he struggled to make time for his young family. He ran his own butcher's business with his dad, but the reality was that the business ran him and he hardly saw his children. His wife Kyra had had enough. He's constantly at work, so he has missed a very large chunk of their lives. Their trial week in Oz was the first time Matt had been away from the shop since their honeymoon eight years ago. He was actually working the morning before we got married. I worked five hours. Before we got married. Before we got married. But could he really kiss goodbye to the business he'd worked so hard to build? I don't know what I can say, do you know? Yes, it would be hard, it would be a wrench, but I'm, I don't want to get upset and cry. Three years on, we find out what happened and where the family are now. They've been busy and there are a few surprises. At times I look at myself and I think I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm doing compared to where I was. So did the Whelan family stay in the UK or go where they were wanted down under? Wanted Down Under puts British families to the ultimate test, giving them the chance to sample life in Australia. They have just one week to find out about homes, work and lifestyle before voting on their future. But what happens next? We've caught up with some of our original families to find out where they are now. The decision to move or not put enormous pressure on the Whelan family from Luton. Self-employed butcher Matt worked flat out running his own business with his dad. The family lived in one of the flats above the shop. Matt loved being a valued member of the community. Knowing everyone and seeing everyone and, and being part of the community and feeling part of it is nice. That's the good part about the shop. But wife Kyra thought the area was going downhill and she wanted out. I've lived in Luton myself about 15, 20 years. And during that time, I've noticed the teenagers in particular um, are becoming a lot more aggressive. They have a lot more attitude about themselves. I'm actually scared to leave the house on my own at night. More often than not, especially weekends, you come downstairs and there's vomit and broken bottles. It's not the kind of environment I want them growing up in. Matt's punishing work schedule meant he missed out on family life big time. On a good week, roughly, I'd, I'd, I'd never work less than 70 hours a week. He's constantly at work, so he has missed a very large chunk of their lives. But in Australia, oh, oh. Matt would have to work for someone else instead of being his own boss. Could that be a bitter pill to swallow? That's difficult. I don't know if I could just turn off and not miss the shot, because I will. So it's a sacrifice I have to make for the benefit of my family. And thoughts of leaving his parents made the decision even harder for Matt. I won't be leaving an awful lot behind. I mean, I don't particularly have any family ties. It'll be tough. I know my mum will come out, but Dad won't. And it'll be hard not seeing him, but um, it'll be harder to stay here, I think, for me. To help Matt and Kyra consider the huge risk they'd be taking, we sent them to Perth in Western Australia. Situated between the bush and the western seaboard, Perth has a relaxed atmosphere. With miles of beaches and clear sunny skies, it was just the place for the Whelans to search for the lifestyle they were looking for. Perth suburbs stretch far and wide, both inland and along the coast. Inner suburbs offer all types of living, from apartments to townhouses. But the further out you go, the more house you get for your money. There were three different lifestyle options to choose from. 
one in the city, one in the country and one on the coast. Each option included a job offer for Matt. Option one was in Mindari, within reach of Perth, where Trevor Hockley ran his business. This is my butcher shop in the So Fresh Mini Market. As you can see, this is a traditional butcher shop. My customers are 80% English people, I thrive on personal service. I need somebody to help me now. So, Matt, there's a big demand for butchers here in Perth. So as soon as you touch down, come and see me. The job offered a salary of £17,000. In 2006, a four-bedroom house with a pool in this area cost more than £200,000. Option two was in leafy Applecross Village, where Brett Reed ran a thriving family butcher shop and deli. Here at Reed's Meats, we do really good quality meats. We do lots of pre-prepared meals. Our customers like the pre-prepared meals because they haven't got much time, but they have got money. Um, it's quite an affluent society here in Applecross. With this option, wages were close to £19,000 a year, but that was for a six-day week. In 2006, prices for a four-bedroom house started from £240,000. Option three was in Inglewood in Perth City. Built in the 1930s, it has old world charm in abundance and a typical multicultural mix with a strong Italian community, including butcher Vince Gareffa. We need you. We've got the most amazing job for you. We're an old-fashioned butcher shop with great new ideas and we know you're going to love working for us. Starting pay with Vince was about £17,000 a year, but with overtime, Matt could have taken home as much as 26000 In 2006, a dream four-bedroom house in the area cost around £250,000. Matt and Kyra, I need you, you need me. Get out here fast. Don't miss this opportunity. God bless you. The Whelans tried out the city option lifestyle for their week in Perth. With its old town charm and opportunity for Matt to earn more than in the country, it looked ideal. But did they find what they were looking for on the other side of the world? After a 20-hour flight with two young children, Matt and Kyra arrived in Perth, tired and jet-lagged. Despite their worries, they knew their week in Australia could offer them the chance to decide on a clean break from their lives in the UK. But would they find what they were looking for? Or would being so far from family, home and work prove too much? To help them adapt to life in Western Australia, the Whelans stayed in a spacious four-bedroom house in Quinns Rock, north of Perth. Come on in. We're at the house. Here we are. Should we go and have a look in the house? Can I see new house? Yeah. Ready? You ready? Very big. Come on. Wow, look at this. It was an open-plan living space with a family kitchen. Wow, look how big it is here. That's, what is it? It is massive. I like look, the kitchen. We've got two tables. Is that big? Wow, it's big, isn't it? It gave the Whelans a good first impression of the kind of house they could afford if they moved to Australia. Wow. We've got another bedroom. So that's three bedrooms so far. Where's Mummy and Daddy going to sleep? And with four bedrooms, the children didn't have to share a room. Wow, what a big bedroom. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Look that's at the, the size biggest of that. Ever. That's as big as your bedroom at home, darling. Come on then, let's go and find the spa. The jacuzzi was the perfect place for the family to think about their big decision before the busy week ahead. What's this? We try to press that button there. What happens? Wow! How much fun is that? They were knocked out by its size and space, and all this for a house that was worth about two hundred thousand pounds on the open market in two thousand and six. The Whelans weren't used to having much family time together. The future direction of their lives rested on this trip and the possibility of Matt spending more time at home. So how apprehensive were they feeling? It's good, it's scary. It's not something we're used to. You're just not used to um, spending 24 hours a day with me, that's but, nice. Yeah, no, it'd be nice. It'd be good to spend some time properly with the kids without having to worry about everything else getting in the way. The weather is a bit of a concern with the children being so fair. 
We do worry that the heat is going to affect them a little bit. Whether, I'd probably say, especially the Teguin. the sun's too much for them, whether they'll adapt to it, that's a major concern about the kids. It's just getting used to putting suntan lotion on every day and carrying mm. hats with you, because at home, suntan lotion is maybe oh, three, rarity. four days in the summer, if you're lucky. So, the kind of property they dreamt of would give them enough outdoor space to really enjoy the long, hot Australian summer. you can expect to get more house for your money than in the UK. The property market down under is on the rise again and not everyone can afford to buy outright. Consider your mortgage and the repayments carefully. So, what could your money buy you? The average property in Sydney costs around £315,000. Adelaide is a good deal cheaper at an average of 235000 For the Whelans, Perth was slack bang in the middle of the price table. Currently, an average home there costs around £280,000. More than 85% of Australians live within 30 miles from the coast. with planning regulations. For the Whelan family, finding the right home was a vital consideration. We showed them three properties in Perth. They were a far cry from their Luton flat. Back in the UK, Matt and Kyra's three-bedroom home was worth £115,000. They dreamt of having more space and hoped their money would stretch further in Oz. Instead of a flat above a shop, the Whelans had set their sights on a four-bedroom detached house with a pool. We found them three properties in and around Perth that best reflected their Aussie dreams. The first house was in Clarkson. It was on the market for $379,000, roughly £150,000 in 2006. The Whelans were counting on getting a mortgage in Australia, but they wouldn't have needed such a big one if they bought something like this. Kitchen, that's nice kitchen. though. Kitchen, quite big. The house had an open plan kitchen and dining area and a spacious lounge. It had air conditioning and room for a pool in the garden. There may have been a large garden, but the house itself was a bit cramped. It had four bedrooms and two bathrooms, but they were all quite small. The price tag is quite good. It's more within our range. Um, but looking at it, you don't get an awful lot for the money. I don't think it's big enough. And after his bad experiences of street crime back in the UK, Matt had seen something suspicious on the way. Would you say that two teenage children on a motorbike riding up the pavement would be a, a typical viewpoint of living in this area? Sure, that's an interesting one. Well, you could get that any, any yeah, area. Yeah, I suppose really. we could, yeah. What would you say the good points and the bad points of the area are? The good points is it's relatively inexpensive and you get more for your money. Uh, it's got fantastic uh, infrastructure because it's a slightly older area. So you've got the train station nearby, you've got good schools. Slight negative is it used to be uh, a little bit... Less desirable. Yeah. However, that's changed considerably because people have realised that they can move into the area, it's very affordable. So accordingly, the prices have gone up. Okay. So in the last 12 months, Clarkson has seen nearly 30% growth, which is phenomenal. How easy would it be to put a pool in and what sort of cost would we be looking at? Generally speaking, you could get a pool and a package for about 15000 to 20000 That'd be really nice. That's good. Yeah. Wow, £8,000 to put in a pool. But even then, they didn't seem too impressed. 
House number two needed to raise the bar. It was in the older Perth district of Inglewood, not far from where Matt could be working. It was on the market for £200,000. Hi, hello. Hi, Carl, I'm Matt. Hi, Matt, nice to meet you. <laughs> it had three bedrooms, one bathroom and a garage. Quite an old-fashioned feel to it, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very old-fashioned feel. So what's in here? The kitchen. The kitchen. There were original features throughout and polished floorboards. Oh, that's a nice big bedroom. Fairly big bedroom, isn't it? That's, that's two doubles we've found so far. Yeah. It was in a popular residential area proud of its history, with local shops, schools and sports clubs. That's quite nice. Yeah. Oh, that is nice. Oh, so I take it this would be the other bedroom. Again, this looks like another double. Oh, that's a good back garden, fair size. Definitely put a pool in here, couldn't you? But just when things were looking up, they got a shock. The garden was being sold separately and a house being built on the land. Now remember, Kyra, that the garden will only be up to where the posts are. Wow. That's minuscule. That's So that's not tiny. an awful lot actually for the kids to run around in then, is it? See, I was liking a house until that. So you get from here to there as garden. See, if the garden had been all of that, I actually would have really, really liked the house because mm. I, I like the old-fashioned feel to it. It's not an awful lot for your money, is there? Oh, dear. Maybe houses in Perth weren't the bargains they'd been hoping for. This house would never be an no, option. No, the back garden just... If it was the full back garden, I would mm. quite like this Yeah, house. it'd be nice, but I couldn't walk outside the backyard and, and have someone else living within six foot of the back of our house, really. And have to share the driveway mm. as well. Yes. Yeah. You want, you want a back garden? Yeah, you want your own space. Definitely. I don't know. Perhaps we don't know the Australian property market as well as we should do. I think it's over just here. city prices. It's like at home, it's like London prices, isn't it? You pay more if you're in the city than you do if you're that little bit outside. No, thank you. With Perth experiencing a massive property boom in 2006, house prices in some areas had risen as much as 40% in one year. Perhaps looking a bit further out of town would widen their options. This is it here. Let's turn in. Wow, Excited. that's a nice big house. Yeah. Cool. Stop here without crashing. Property 3 was in Secret Harbour and was also on the market for £200,000. In 2006, that was around half a million dollars, still at the top end of the Whelan's budget. Located 40 minutes south of Perth, there was much more house for their money. Hello, John. This is Tegrin. Tegrin, how are you? Wow, that's a nice, a lovely kitchen, oh, that's isn't a nice it? Nice kitchen. I like that. That's very nice. And we have another sitting room here. Oh, this is what I expect: two sitting um, rooms. Yeah. With four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and the usual open-plan living area, it offered great space for a young family. I like this. And there's another one. Three. So that's the three. We're looking for the master now. Yeah. There we go. Four. Oh, that's four. That's very nice. It's good. I like this one. It was 12 years old and finished to a high spec. It was also on a large plot because it was an older house. These days the plots are smaller. And the best bit, although only five minutes from the beach, it had its own pool. Wow, look at that. Wow. It's look huge. how pretty it is out here. That's really nice. Look at that for a pool, you in. Wouldn't you love one of them? Wow. Would you love a pool in your back garden? So, what did they think? It's a fair price, I think, for the house, whether that's within our range. I don't know. It might be at the very top end, um, realistically. However, it's something that's worth looking at more. I would love a house like this. In a way, I think I could see this as like a dream house, because mm. it's got the space, it's got everything that we'd like in the back garden. It's, it's got everything that I could possibly look for in a house. I love this one. Viewing three very different homes gave the Whelans an idea of the range of property and what they could afford. Matt and Kyra had to decide if there was more on offer here than in the UK. Living in England, Luton, and here visiting Western Australia and Perth, I think our choice on houses are going to be... Australia. Australia. <laughs> Whether you see yourself as a beach bum, an outback adventurer or a metropolitan culture vulture, Australia could offer you the life of your dreams.
In the UK, Matt Whelan might not have been able to find much time for hobbies, but Australia offered a dramatic change and a new range of possibilities. For sports buffs, there's rugby, cricket, Aussie rules football, tennis, golf, swimming, mountain biking and, of course, surfing, along with many more. With 30,000 miles of coastline and over 10,000 beaches, it's the perfect place to live if you love the sea. Many people are under the illusion that there's little culture in Oz, but with museums, galleries and theatres in every major city and institutions like the Sydney Opera House, there's more to Australia than just sport. But you'll need some cash to splash on the lifestyle of your dreams. And the cost of living in Australia is not as cheap as many people assume. It really depends on your circumstances. You have to take into account health insurance and the cost of imported goods and food. Although the weather might be better, you need to remember that what you save in heating bills, you might spend on aircon. The Whelan family had to take all this into consideration before making their big decision, whether to stay in the UK or move to Australia. Matt and Kyra made the most of their trial week in 2006. As well as finding out about homes and what they could afford, they wanted to make sure the lifestyle down under was what they dreamt it would be, so long as Matt could find time away from work. Apart from searching for a bigger, cheaper house, they were looking for a slower pace of life, sunshine and proximity to the beach. Can I have one portion of fish and chips? And fish and chips Aussie style was a must. That's about, yeah, 15 quid. Yeah, it's very, very good, really. Taste testers got come still, though, so it might be cheap. It's got to be nice, hasn't it? We're going to sit down. Look at that for a sausage. Let's try the fish. Coming in, here we go. Yeah. Matt and Kyra were painfully aware that their children are very fair skinned. They were worried how a move to Oz would suit them, so they stocked up on sun protection before they hit the beach. So, when anybody's wearing a 50 plus garment, they don't need to apply sunscreen underneath. As long as the kids are happy and the wife's shopping, spending money, everyone's a winner. I know that. <laughs> she hears everything. No, you've got to look after your eyes, young man. They should not be allowed to go out there without wearing sunscreen. They've got to be protected. We have the big tubs, two and a half litre tubs. I suppose in a country where they have a hole in the ozone layer above it, they need to be as wise as they can to the harmful effects of the sun. What do you think of Daddy's hat? <laughs> Is a total of $398.65, thanks. OK. One, two, three, four. Just like in the UK, the weather can be unpredictable in Perth. And despite all the Whelan's new sun protection gear, they ended up the only ones on the beach. The cold defeated even the Whelan's, so they packed up. Easier said than done. Well, the weather's not always great in Australia, is it? So, after a flavour of the laid-back Aussie lifestyle, how did they vote? The beaches, this much closer to, to where we are. Cleaner. The climate in general. Even bad days aren't quite so bad. Nothing compared to home? No. So, our choice in lifestyle would have to be... Australia. Australia. <laughs> The Whelan family had been busy in their trial week. They'd fallen for Aussie homes, but discovered the right one would stretch their budget. It's a fair price, I think, for the house, whether that's within our range. I don't know. It might be at the very top end. With the huge decision about their future still hanging in the balance, Matt had to find the right job, and they would have to decide if they could leave their loved ones behind before they voted on their future. Three years on, we find out where they are now, and it's going to be a shock. At times, I look at myself and I think, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm doing, compared to where I was. They'll be voting again to see if their future's in the UK or in Australia. <laughs> Whoa! 
Working in Australia might give you the time and lifestyle you've dreamt of. Remember, though, it's a culture of work hard, play hard, so don't come expecting the easy life. Applying for a visa to live and work in Australia is a challenging process. There's a point system with different skills, qualifications and other factors bringing in different scores, and some skills are only wanted in certain states. Going through an immigration expert is the most straightforward way to apply. They can help calculate your points, advise you where your skills are most wanted and process your application. Taking on the paperwork yourself is cheaper, but be warned, it's not for the faint-hearted. Once you've got your visa, finding the right job can be a daunting task. But don't forget that if you're on the wanted list, your skills are in demand for a reason. Once you've made the move, you'll have to get used to some new work practices and methods. For Matt Whelan, this would have meant exchanging his butcher's knives for the bandsaw, common practice in Australian butchery. You'll be earning Aussie dollars, so you could expect a wage drop. If you can get the all-important work-life balance right, you might find you've made the best move of your life. For Matt Whelan, finding the right job was vital. Let's see how he got on. Previously in the UK, Matt was a self-employed butcher, living almost directly above his shop in Luton. Selling up to become an employee meant a huge change in his working life. Butchers were on the wanted list in Australia, but if Matt was serious about moving, he would have had to leave his business, which he worked so hard to establish. The family's decision to emigrate would hinge on whether Matt could make the break. Is Vince about, please? Time Matt met the boss. Oh, buongiorno and welcome. Matt, at last. Hello, Vince. Vince Gariffa, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, sir. you too. Welcome to Australia. Thank you very much. Excellent. They didn't tell me you were handsome, mate. <laughs> Good for business, <laughs> handsome young butchers. Good, thank you. Excellent. Welcome to our little butcher shop. And by the time we knock down all those walls and move into the new store next year, I think it's going to be an absolute delight. A bit of room for a couple of big boys who look after <laughs> the customers. <laughs> So this is our kitchen, Matt. OK. We uh, do a lot of cooking in here, a lot of take-home meals. In here is uh, the production for the kitchen and some of the packing. Let's get you kitted up. OK. And let's get to work, OK? All right, Vince. No worries. Looking good, mate. Makes you look very slim, that black man. Does it? Oh, man, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Matt, this is where we're working. OK. OK, I want, to, I want to have a little bit of fun today. And, of course, I know that you work by hand. Yeah. And we work by bandsaw. OK. So I've got an advantage over you on a little bit of speed. But, uh, you know, time is off the essence over It's here. a marathon. It's not a sprint. Absolutely. <laughs> well done. Matt got stuck in. Working side by side, he got a good chance to bond with his potential employer. Matt, over here since the 70s, we've been decimated by supermarkets. How have you been affected back in England? Uh... Pretty much the same, Vince. You know, they, they spend millions on marketing, advertising, packaging, and, and they don't really spend, I feel, as much, or they don't have the same sort of passion for good food or even local produce as you or I, mate. And I think the service is winning uh, our people back. We're definitely starting to get in front again. Vince's European-style shop offered more than just meat. The shelves were stuffed with delicacies and homemade meals, reflecting Vince's gastronomic vision. How many people do you have work here? Uh, the Australian joke is uh, very few work here, but uh, many of them attend and they got their hand out on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> While Matt was working, Kyra and the children had some time to think. She was worried about whether Matt would hack it as an employee after so many years working for himself with his dad. I think he is going to find it tough the first year or so working for someone else because he's just not used to it. But all in all, he knows the benefits of it, so I think that will just keep him going and he'll actually enjoy it, being able to come home and switch off. Um, for Matt, going from being his own boss to actually being employed, it will be a big change for him emotionally, letting go of the shop that he's basically built up and starting over again, working for someone else. Back at the butchers in Delhi, the big decision for Matt was whether to give up his own shop. It will be hard. You know, we've been at the shop for 13 years. 
Um, I've owned it for the last six or seven, um, and I've put a lot of effort into the shop. I'll miss it if we decide to go. Um, I, I don't know what I can say, do you know? Yes, it'll be hard, it'll be a wrench, but I'm, I don't want to get upset and cry. You know? I have, to, I have to look at the positives of why we're doing what we're doing. It's going to be hard. It'll be hard for me, but it'll be better for my children and my wife. So, therefore, the greater good comes out on top. He's a very handsome, healthy-looking specimen of, of malehood, and, uh, and people trust the look that he's given me. In Italian, we say simpatico, which means he's very sympathetic eyes. Uh, I think he will do very, very well. I work at home, I work hard, I work long hours. Um, I'm a big fish in a very small pond and everyone knows me, which is nice. Um, or there's Australia with me being a small fish in a big pond working for Vince, uh, where no one really knows me. So, was it to be the UK or Australia? It is difficult, but for the benefit of my children, Australia. To help them get a taste of the Australian life, the Whelans were invited over to Vince Gareffa's house for lunch. This is an addition every garden should have, not just a barbecue, but a pizza oven, eh? Wow. It was a chance for Matt and Kyra to get some advice and to sample some top quality Aussie food. Ooh, that's a nice river beef. What's making you come over? I know my parents come out here, there was nothing back in Croatia. It was after the war, so they just yeah. had to make a life. But for you... This is our first holiday we've had since, since our, honeymoon. our honeymoon seven and a half years ago. This is the kids' first holiday. Yeah, this is their, this is their first break ever. Um, and at some point, you've got to say, like you said, I work, I work so hard. I, I, I've got working hard down to a T. But sometimes I've got to start living hard now and enjoying myself and partying a little bit. Not partying as much, but have time for my family and, and watch them grow up and spend my spare time with them. They were worried about whether they could afford to live a laid-back lifestyle with Matt at home more. So Vince gave them some realistic advice. I think uh, in Australia, it's uh, if you can dream it, you can you can build it. But you're going to have to work. I would look at people coming in that have got stars in their eyes, and um, they start dreaming about doing the standard 38-hour week and achieving everything. Well, that's totally impossible. If overtime is not part of your plan, there's no way in the world that Kyra and the kids can achieve uh, the, the desired possessions that they require. You definitely want to be sure that you're in a nice house, in a nice suburb, near a nice beach, and that's not going to come cheap, but it's very, very achievable if you're willing to work somewhere between 50 and 60 hours, but uh, not 38. I think, Vince, when, when you've come from working 85 to 90 hours a week, six, six and a half days a week, um, to, to go down to 60 hours will seem like a holiday. <laughs> well, my biggest suggestion for you would be to take it slow. Uh, I would suggest that moving over should be a must, not an if. Uh, working for me should be a must, not an if. <laughs> and uh, deciding where to live should be a slow process. In 2006, to focus their minds ahead of their big decision, we showed the Whelans some messages from their loved ones back home. Hi, Matt. Hi, Cara. Hello, you and Tapey. Hi, you two. And you two imps. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying, enjoying yourselves out there. When I first heard that Matthew and Kyra were thinking of emigrating to Australia, I was um, a bit surprised. He's just such an easy lad to get on with and works very hard. He gets up at half four in the morning, he goes to bed at half eight. Is that a life? I don't think so. If he works like he does in this country, over in Australia, he'll get on very, very well, a lot better than what he's getting on here. I mean, he's got his own family unit now. And it's like everything you want to... Do well for your family unit, don't you, the children? And, and Australia, it seems, you know, to offer so much more. I think they may miss their family 
been around them so close friends, you know, starting afresh really. Yes, I will miss them. I'll miss, uh, me will, my daughter. She will, she will. Okay. Come on, don't get upset. We're father and son, but we're friends. Uh, we're everything. Um, and him not being about anymore, uh, it's going to be very hard to handle. Very hard indeed. It's nice when they come on a Sunday, isn't it? Um, and we see them growing up. Aww. I do miss you. I do miss you dreadfully. But so long as you're happy and you're doing OK, that's OK with me. It was weird seeing them get upset because we haven't done anything yet. You know, at the end of the day, it's all in the planning stage still. Nothing's been realised. Also, I think what comes off there is everyone realises how hard I work. Um, and, they, you know, they want us to get away from that, which is nice, you know. He was actually working the morning before we got married. I worked five hours. Before we got married. Before we got married. So... Um, I mean, he actually went into work the morning when I was actually in labour with you and I had to phone him back. Perhaps I worked too hard. You do. During their trial week, the Whelans saw how much Australia had to offer them as a family. It was a fresh start in a new job. I know my mum will come out, but Dad won't. It'll be hard not seeing him, but um, it'll be harder to stay here. But the trial week had given them a new perspective away from Luton. It makes a change to see Matt relax. It makes a change to see him having fun with the kids and being an idiot. It's a different world, and it's, it's a world that's kind of geared for the children to be able to grow, play and have fun. It was a huge decision for the Whelan family, one that could have changed the rest of their lives. So how did they vote to stay in the UK or move to Australia? They both have their good points and bad points, and I think our final vote will be for... Australia! That was in 2006, but what happened next? We caught up with them a year later and they were in Australia! Matt and Kyra had made the move down under earlier that year and had rented a four-bedroom house in Quinns Rocks, the same suburb of Perth they stayed in during their trial week. Hello, come in and see our house. We sold the old house. We sold the business to your dad. Yeah, and we moved over, made a fresh start. This is our bedroom. It's a lot bigger than the bedrooms we had in the UK. En suites, walk-in wardrobes, it's just... Yeah, we have an en suite. Mm, nice quality. They chose a home with the relaxed open plan living that impressed them before and with the space they so craved. In fact, their old house in Luton could almost have fitted into this one room. And what about the outside space they needed for their young family? This is the garden. Um, it's nice that we've got a bit of greenery. It's nice that we've got a garden. We have a nice patio set so we can sit out, enjoy the sun, enjoy the weather. If you come over this way, this is our sea view. This is what really, I suppose, for us makes living in Australia. The outdoor lifestyle, the weather, the climate. A better quality of life was always top of the agenda and they were keen to hold on to the Aussie dream they experienced in their trial week. It's when we come over then stayed here as we got the, the feeling, that, the, the comfortable, homely feeling that we feel now still. Um, and that's the main reason why we stay here, to be honest with you. We've been to other suburbs. This is quieter than other suburbs. It's newer, it's further north as well. And it's just a nice yeah, feel we to just, it. We're comfortable and happy here and that's the main reason. In 2006, Matt was offered a job at Mondo's. When they made the move, he started work with Vince Gareffa. So, how was he fitting in? When I met him and I realised how passionate he was about his industry, uh, I just didn't need to look any further. He had to come and work for us. As it turned out, I didn't realise that I was actually not just getting a butcher, but I was getting a fellow that had some people skills and fire in the belly. 
So, was it a fresh challenge becoming an Aussie butcher? The things we sell here are far, far different from what we sold in England um, in the way of the cuts and the different animals and different meats that we sell. Um, you know, we sell emu, we sell ostrich, we sell kangaroo. There's all sorts of different things we sell here that are never touched back in England. But you have the basic skills of being a butcher or if you're a bricklayer or a builder or a carpenter. It's just transferring the skills that you have into a new environment and that's, that's the thing. And as long as you know your trade and you're good at what you do, there's no reason why you can't. Matt quickly became a valued member of the team. After only three months, he was rewarded by becoming assistant manager in charge of 30 people and earning over £40,000 a year. He's loved by staff, he's loved by customers and I get the feeling that he's improved his life, you know, quite comfortably he's improved his life and it's obvious that he's happy uh, and we're very, very happy. We just hope that he's fallen in love with us as much as we have of him. But it wasn't as romantic as Vince thought. With his new responsibilities, Matt began working longer hours and he had less time to spend with the family. It was the nightmare scenario they thought they'd left behind. Before they reached breaking point, something had to give. So, only 18 months after moving to Perth, the Whelan family left the coast behind for a new life in the middle of the outback. In summer 2009, they packed their bags and headed 370 miles inland to the city of Kalgoorlie, or Cal as the locals call it. The Whelans have moved to the suburb of Somerville, which has a population of less than 3,500 people. Four weeks in, let's see how they're settling into their new home. Hello, welcome to our home in Kalgoorlie. Um, come around and have a look. It's a four-bedroom, two-bathroom house with a good-sized garden for the children. They're only renting for now, but a house like this would be worth around £250,000. The rooms are impressive. This is the main bedroom, and we have our en suite. Through here is the playroom for the kids. So this is Tegwin's bedroom. As you can see, it's smaller than the bedroom she had in the last house but bigger than the bedrooms in England. All, all rooms seem to be just that little bit bigger here than they were back in our house in Luton. It's the open plan living Matt's always dreamt of. This is Kyra's favourite room. This is where she spends all of her time. Not my favourite room, but where I do spend most of my time. But I can actually talk to people while cooking as opposed to being locked away in a room on my own. This is our lounge and diner all in one. It's nice open plan, airy, lets a lot of light through. We spend a lot of time here all as a family together, playing games or watching telly or reading. It may be early days for Kalgoorlie, but two and a half years after moving to Australia, how much have their lives changed? The kids spend more time outside now than they ever did, playing on their bikes in the gardens. Um, hopefully they'll make some friends playing on their bikes in the gardens. Um, hopefully they'll make some friends in the street so they can get out on the street as well. I just think it's a much nicer place to live. Mm, it's much yeah. greener and cleaner. You wake up to a blue sky, you don't wake up to horrible grey clouds. It's just a whole load of things all added together that make one big positive, I think. But surely they miss the beach life they had in Perth. Yes, we lived right close to the lovely beach and it was wonderful having it there, but we didn't go there anywhere like we thought we would do. Mind you, I got put off a bit by the beach with the last school summer holidays. I took the kids down to the beach and wondered why there's no one in the water and why the lifeguards had closed the water. And then we saw a fin in the sea. And it was about 20 metres out and it turned out it was a shark. Great white shark. So from there, I was a little bit wary about taking the kids to the beach, as you can imagine. <laughs> it's a bit scary. But what really motivated the move from Perth? We come over here for a better quality of family life. I worked for the butchers. Originally, my hours were quite acceptable. However, I got into a management role within the business and more was expected of me. So in the end, I was working the same kind of hours that I was working back home. And then on top of that, there was the traveling. It was 40 minutes traveling each way. And we just, we never got to see you again. We'd moved all this way for a slightly different life and 
The only thing that, that had changed really was the location. With their Australian idyll threatened by Matt's working hours, he made a huge decision to turn his back on 14 years working as a butcher. And the career change was a dramatic one, as Matt is now a policeman. <laughs> Yeah, I've always wanted to be a policeman, even from when I was at school. I thought the opportunity for being a policeman had passed me by. In the UK, um, I never would have joined the job just because I was a butcher and that was my pigeonhole, that was what I was. But in Australia, it's amazing. It seems that you can do what you want to do. The opportunity is here for you. Um, and no one's, I don't feel no one's held me back or knocked me because of where I was six, 12 months ago. Matt's on around £35,000, less than he was earning in the UK. But a big bonus is having the house rent heavily subsidised. It's a bargain $50 a week. So how do his two lives compare? Life in Kalgoorlie as a, as a police officer is about as far removed from life as a butcher in England as you'd ever imagine. At times, I look at myself and I think, I can't believe I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm doing, compared to where I was. I've put a lot of hard work and effort in. Um, and this is the result. Back at base, Matt's traded in his meat cleaver for a much more dangerous weapon. Morning, Matt. Morning. It seems to suit him. To begin with, it was very, very strange uh, using the gun. However, over time, you just get used to to doing it every day. Only once in the situation I've had to put out my gun so far in my career. Um, it's not something you do regularly. And there's a good reason to be armed. In Western Australia, we're such a vast state, you could be hours away from backup and in a life or death situation, and you need the appropriate force option. He's really starting to sound like a copper. Kalgoorlie might not be everyone's first choice, but there was a good reason behind the move. Within Western Australian Police, at some point in your career, you have to do country service, and it's a two-year service stint. So the opportunity come for us to come and work here. It was a good time in the kids' ages because they're not quite in high school yet, so we could be back in Perth before they start high school. All the factors just made it a, a, a good move at the moment. Matt's settling in well to his new life, but it was a huge change. It meant taking the family away from cosmopolitan Perth to Australia's largest outback city, 200 miles from the nearest ocean. Founded in 1893, Kalgoorlie is a real frontier town with a massive two-mile-long super pit in operation 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what does Kyra think of being surrounded by, well, nothing? I couldn't say whether it's better or worse, it's just different. Because it's smaller and open, it's your typical country town, which is something I've never experienced before. I can't say whether we will definitely stay here indefinitely, because you don't know what the future's going to hold, we don't know what's going to happen with Matt's work. As long as the kids are settled, I'm happy to stay wherever they're happy. But leaving behind a friendship group in Perth was a big struggle. I've come here and unlike Perth, I'm here and I know nobody. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to get to know people. Sometimes it can get a little bit lonely, but I'm not the type of person to let that get to me. If I'm at school and there's a parent there, I'm likely to grab the parent and start talking to them, because I don't like being lonely. Kalgoorlie might not feel like home yet, but Australia certainly is. We've done our citizenship test. We're just waiting for the ceremony. Then we will officially be Australian citizens. When we already feel like Australian citizens, the kids are beginning to pick up the Australian twang. I'm hoping when the kids grow up, they will think of themselves as Australians, but they will have the option when they're older of dual citizenship, so it's their choice what they want to do. But hopefully they'll want to stay here. Kyra's definitely right about the Aussie twang. We called it Spot because it's got three spots on its side. Yeah, it's three large, but he's a feisty buddy. Matt's arrival home signals playtime with the newest addition to their Aussie family. The Whelans have spent a month living in Kalgoorlie. After two and a half years in Australia, the reality of being thousands of miles from the UK has set in. 
I'm fairly upset that we haven't been able to make it back. It's a, it's a shame, but I think it's made us realise now just how far we are away from England. Um, it's not as simple as, all oh, right, I'm going and that's it. It would cost us about $10,000 to fly back to England, and that's just on the flights for the four of us. It's very, very hard. It's very hard, and we're a long way away. Um, and it's only being here now that you realise that perhaps that's, that's the downside of us being here. Moving over here has been a big financial upheaval, and it, uh, it does set you back financially quite a lot. Um, not only that, but then get set up and get started again. Um, it's not just a question of selling the UK, move over here and buy yourself another house. It's been financially detrimental to us to move over here. It's sacrificing flying back to the UK to give our children a home. So the plan is to buy a property in the future. Until then, how's the work-life balance coming along? I might not be earning quite as much, but then, you know, money's not everything, I think. Now we've come to realise that the most important things really are to spend family time together, which we get a lot of. Yeah. I get six weeks holiday a year, so um, next year I've booked all my holiday around the kids', ho kids school holidays. And I think once it comes, you know, the, the time comes, we'll pop down, Might we'll go down to, to yeah, go to Esperance, down to the coast, um, explore some of the beaches down there. The, the main thing I can say is that Australia gives you so many different opportunities that you can be really what you want to be. The Whelans faced a heart-wrenching decision to leave loved ones in the UK. After two and a half years in Oz, how will they cope seeing a new set of messages from Matt's parents? Hi Matt, hi Kyra. I can't believe that here I am saying hello again to my Australian citizens. Well, the day Matt left, I just, uh, I didn't really honestly believe it was going to happen. I was shell-shocked, to be truthful. And numb. Just didn't believe it had happened. Well, I just kept expecting to see him walk in the door, hello dad or something, you know? I just wish he was there and I'd love to see him. I'd really love to see him. I think it was initially six months before I actually got my head round that this was a permanent situation and that I weren't going to see them. At Christmas time and birthdays, you haven't got them there to you know, hand their presents to or give them a cuddle or a kiss for their birthday. A lot of thinking, a lot of soul searching. Could I have done this? Could I have done that better? You know, did I make him go or...? I don't think I made him go. I think he wanted to go, but could I have at times have uh, said something? But I didn't want to uh, put any pressure on him. What he got to realise, I think, is that they're going to a better life. And that's what, we, that's what we got to be concerned for, for them, not for yourself. You've had your life, so you've got to look, you've got to look, look at them and think, you know, they've got a better way of life out there, and you've got to be happy for them. I think Matt had a wobbly moment when I um, had a wobbly moment. I phoned him up. Um, it was the early hours of the morning here, and uh, I was crying down the phone to him about how, how I missed them, which set him off which set Kyra off, but um, when you see what lifestyle they've got, that, that soon passes. That soon passes. And um, he, he just looks at the benefit for his children. And what parent don't make a sacrifice for their kids? They've done the right thing and I'm so proud of them. Miss your loads, but you made the right choice, mate. Just stick at it. You'll be all right. Love you. Really, really so proud of how well you've done over there. And I'm wearing your charms. You're always with me. Love you. Bye. It's odd. It must be hard seeing your dad because you haven't seen him for two and a half years, and hard seeing your mum because you realise you're not going to see her for another year. Yeah. I don't think it'll ever get easier. When we first done this, it was just like, we were flying home the next day anyway, so it didn't really matter. This is, this is real life, and it's hard. 
was so odd. Yeah. When did it kick in that it was real? When did it suddenly hit you? Seeing him again. They've established a new life for themselves in Kalgoorlie, but for Matt, the pain of leaving loved ones behind in the UK is still raw. It's been a roller coaster ride for Matt, Kyra, Ewan, and Tegwan. In 2006, Matt hoped to change his life. He'd been working long hours as a butcher in Luton and thought he'd found his perfect job in Perth. Whilst Kyra could see a future for herself and the children, Matt was worried about leaving loved ones behind. It'll be tough. I know my mum will come out, but Dad won't. It'll be hard not seeing him, but it'll be harder to stay here. They moved to Oz, hoping to get away from the rat race, but their dream life was left in tatters, as work in Perth became too much to bear. We'd moved all this way for a slightly different life, and the only thing that, that had changed really was the location. Matt's made a huge decision to join the police force and relocate to Kalgoorlie. He seems to have found the perfect balance. Yeah, life here is very good. Once we've been here for a bit longer, I think things could only be getting better. But for Kyra, it's proved harder as settling the children has taken priority. Sometimes it can get a little bit lonely because I've come here and unlike Perth, I'm here and I know nobody. Life in Australia hasn't been easy for the Whelans, but they've made a home for themselves. So how will they vote now? We've been living here for two and a half years now. Um, we're Australian citizens. Uh, all of our experiences we've had so far for here, um, we still go for. Australia! So the Whelans have made a new life for themselves in Kalgoorlie. Matt has a new job as a policeman and the children are growing up as little Australians. Join us again next time when we catch up with another family on Wanted Down Under Revisited. Another new series next on BBC One. It's Best of Homes Under the Hammer. And then a woman who wants some new furniture calls on cash in the attic at 11.30.